Hello and welcome to Just One More Thing, a podcast about knitting and fiber arts and craftiness. I'm your host, Janessa. This is episode eight. I don't know what it's going to be named. <laughs> I have yet to decide. It might be the meh episode because everything is just kind of meh today. It's cloudy. Um, I actually tried to do this. I usually turn the overhead light off so that you don't get this big glare up here. Um, but everything got so, so dark. Like you could barely, and all of, like this looked black. Um, what did I just show? I, I was showing the mockery reshawl that I'm working on. This, you couldn't see. It was the lighting. So we're going to deal with the overhead glare and my shiny forehead. I apologize for that. Um, but for the sake of the yarn, we're going to turn on a light today. So for those of you who have been coming back over the last couple of months to hang out with me while I knit and talk about my knitting, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. If this is the first time that you are watching welcome and I hope you enjoy and uh, feel free to share this with your friends if you want to find me on the interwebs on the social medias um, all of the pertinent links are in the description box mostly I'm active on Facebook and Ravel or Instagram and Facebook um, I do try to check out Ravelry at least once a day so yeah you can find me. I'm easy to find. Just just one more thing. Pretty much everywhere. Even on Twitter. <laughs> Though, um, Twitter's pretty much just retweets and like sharing that I've uploaded the video to YouTube. So <laughs> I'm not great at Twitter, but I'm on everything else. So you can find me all of those places. Um I had a whole coffee rent this morning on the first take, but it was pretty boring. So I'm going to spare you and just let you know I'm drinking iced tea, even though it's kind of cold today. Rant over. <laughs> so what am I wearing? This is the hitchhiker that I was working on. Um, do I dare take it off? I don't know if I'll get it back on. Um, at least you can see the yarn better with the light on. <laughs> so this is the Hitchhiker. Um, it is knit out of a worsted weight merino that I dyed myself. Um, this was the yarn that I had used for, I dyed it up for the Down River Cowl. Um, and these were like the, I dyed three balls, I used the lightest it was almost kind of a gradient. It was very much a mistake. A happy mistake in my dyeing. I meant to get like a completely one color tonal like gradient of purples. But I didn't. And I think it's like maybe episode two or three that you can watch me talk about how I dyed this yarn. If you want to go back and watch those. Um, I'll spare you all the details a second time. Um, but this is like the medium part and then about there it gets into the, the darker of the skeins. So I really love how this knit up. The Hitchhiker does a great job with variegated yarns. Um, it looks so pixelated, right? Like you get hardly any, you get some little bits of color pooling. But for the most part, it's broken up really, really nice with all those little blips of white in there. Um, and so you get this just kind of fun, pixelated, pinkish, purple, reddish color. I really, really like it. So, um, let's see if I can get it back on again. Or it won't fall off. So there you go. The Hitchhiker Scarf. This is like the third one that I've kept for myself. I was going to try and pull out 
nope, that's not a hitchhiker. I was going to say, I thought maybe that one was, but that's not the one I was talking about. Um, I have two other hitchhikers somewhere. I don't know where they've gone to. Um, but it is a pattern that I've knit several times and I enjoy it. So if you've not checked it out, you got to go check it out. If you're newer to Ravelry, it was very, very popular when Ravelry first started. Like it was the thing, it was almost like this year's, uh, find your page. <laughs> like everyone's knit one or everyone's at least seen it. Um, but yeah, one of my favorites. So now we can go to what's on my needles. Um, I am knitting Emerson a sweater. I'm knitting him the flax light. I'm using Knit Picks Stroll Tonal in the canopy colorway. Do you see how different those skeins of yarn are? Um, in this light they look almost identical. But this one seems to be a lot darker and this one seems to be a lot lighter. Like this one almost has more of the dark green and this one has more of the light green in it. I can, there, there's a difference. It's light, but there is a difference. So I am alternating skeins because I was like, I'm going to be the good knitter. I'm going to alternate the skeins and, um, and then that will take care of any like weird color lines between the yarn, between switching yarns. Um, cause I'm going to have to use probably like a skein and a half to get the yardage I need for his sweater. So there was gonna, I didn't want there to be a difference. Like you can see the, like this one's a lot lighter and that one's a lot darker. You can see that better there. However, knitting is letting me down on this because you see that? Every time I come to that very light yellow section right there, it pools on me. It's even worse on this side. It doesn't see it doesn't seem to matter where in the sweater I am. It it's definitely kind of pooling and flashing and I've tried alternating every other row. I've tried alternating every row. Doesn't seem to matter. Those colors always end up in the same spot and they pool. Um, Emerson's not going to care, so I suppose I shouldn't care either, but it's annoying. I also taught myself a new skill while um, working on this little sweater. And that was to Norwegian Pearl. Um, my thought was... It would help. I've already separated for the sleeves. Let me pull these so they don't fall off. So on the sleeve, you have this garter stitch detail on the top of the sleeve. So you can kind of see where there's where the sleeve stitches are being held. That's going to be, it comes all the way up on the shoulder. And then that will go all the way down the sleeve on that. So every other roll, I have to purl those 18 stitches in order to get garter stitch. Um, and I thought maybe the Norwegian purl would be faster. It's been suggested to me in the past and um, a lot of people use it because they, they say that it's easier to purl without having to move the yarn to the front. I tried it once a long time ago. I didn't really find it very easy to do, but I wasn't nearly the experienced knitter so, that I am now. Now that I'm more experienced, I thought, I'll give it another try. And it was easier to learn this time. I picked it up much faster. There, I think maybe also there's just better videos out there on YouTube explaining how to do it. Harn my measly uh, allergies. Um, but even though I was able to successfully do the Norwegian Pearl, it really messed up my gauge like significantly to the point where um, after doing it for like two rows, I had to rip back and redo it because it, it was bothering me. Like it was those, I don't know, 
there's already so much extra in a purl stitch anyway, yarn wise. I felt like this one was putting a lot extra into it and I just didn't like, I didn't like how it was looking. So, um, I'm glad that I learned it. I can see where it would be useful in certain projects. Um, especially one by one ribbing. Like the next time I have to one by one rib something, I'm totally going to break out that new skill. But for the most part, I think I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. So, um, I also, you saw this for like two seconds at the top of the show. Um, I'm knitting on the Makariri shawl from Aurora Hard Knit, which I know I'm mispronouncing that, and I apologize. Um, but it's a fun pattern, and you can find the link in the show notes um, to check her out. This was a free pattern when I signed up for her email list. Um, well worth it. The emails are good. So, you saw most of this last week. I am almost to the point of starting another stripe section. Um, so, it just kind of repeats between plain, garter, stripe, lace, plain, stripe, lace. Um, and yeah, it's coming out good. The second section is nice because that set of stitches stays the same. So I only have to count and make sure I've got the right stitch count on this side. And I've put a little marker there to help me remember which side to increase on. I've also had to put a little marker here in the middle so that I remember to do the decreases. For I the kept knitting. Line. Like, it, you get into rhythm with it. You're like, do, 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 do. And then, yeah, pretty soon I just, I had knit right past it. So I had to start putting a little stitch marker there. Uh, the gray that I'm using is Knit Picks Stroll in the ash colorway and then the purple is Malabrigo sock with fuzz on it <laughs> uh, Malabrigo sock in the eggplant colorway and I can't get there's there's the color there we go so those are the two yarns I'm really enjoying it I cast this on for the treat yourself knit along with the wool slayers on their group um so if you are knitting something if you recently cast on something for yourself that's just for you i would suggest going over there and joining in their little knit along because they're giving away some prizes some pretty nice prizes actually so go check it out all right um i talked about emerson's sweater and i talked about this so now it's time and I finished this I guess I didn't work on a whole lot I did a lot of knitting but just not on a whole lot of projects <laughs> um, if you do not want to be spoiled for the Hohe mystery wrap knit along look away now fast forward like two minutes and then I'll be done talking about this and we'll be talking about spinning so just Look away. Are you ready? If you're still here, you've been warned, you're going to get spoiled. I'm going to show you my progress. If I can untangle it. Okay. So, in clue two, a rectangle has started to emerge. Stitch counts are staying the same. chevrons seem to be part of the design so clue one was worked up to this point right here and then this eyelet row and the two bands of thick color are clue two so there we go um i am really digging on this pattern I, since there's two pieces, I decided I would knit them concurrently. So, like, I did, um, 
I would do like this color on this piece and then I would do the same color. I would do the same like four rows over here. And then I would do that thick brown one and then I'd switch my needles back over here and I'd do the brown. So like I was switching for each color. I was finishing that color on both pieces before I moved on. I don't know that it got me done any faster. <laughs> um, I honestly don't think that it did, but in my mind, it like, I don't know, it kept me going. I am considering throwing these onto a big, like 60 inch cable and knitting them two at a time. I'm thinking that might be the way to go. Just so that I don't get that whole kind of like second sock syndrome thing going on. But anyway, I'm very, very happy with how it's turning out. So there's piece one with my needles still on. And then this one is on a much shorter cable. So I'll show it to you this way. Eek. I'm afraid. So this one's going to be a little more bunched up because I'm afraid of losing stitches. Um, but there's the other one. So, yep. Uh, that is coming along nicely. The clues seem to be coming out um, at 5 o'clock on Thursdays, my time. So, I um, am getting quite a bit of that done, like Thursday and Friday. And then I think I finished these like sometime on Saturday, um, but I didn't get quite the solid amount of knitting done that I usually do. They worked up quick because it was just like two big bands of color. So I'm really excited to see what clue three brings. It seems like every time I think, I know, I know what she's thinking. I can see where this is going. I'm completely surprised by the next clue when it comes out. I'm like, I was wrong. <laughs> So, uh, usually, like with a mystery knit, you kind of start to see where the pattern's going. Um, you get a sense for the repeats and things. And this one is like completely different every single week. So, I'm just, I'm completely floored. I love getting the surprises. Um, I've tried to be better on Instagram about putting up like a, you know, swipe to see the progress because I guess some people were getting spoiled. And,. I know, spoilers is one of those, like, who cares kind of things for some people, and other people are like, how dare you spoil me on the internet? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so, I'll try to be good about not spoiling people, or at least giving you a warning that you're going to get a spoiler. So that was all that I knit on this week, were those four things. I did not touch the Tree of Life afghan at all. Which I kind of have to this week. I do have a deadline for that. And it's the end of June. Um, so yeah. I kind of need to get knitting on that. Because this is the end of May. So that will kind of be my priority. For the next week. Is knitting on that. And knitting on the Hohe Mystery Wrap. When that comes out on Thursday. But until then. like all, I think all of my knitting is going to be. On the Tree of Life app again. Mm. <laughs> Can you see how excited I am about that prospect? Oh well. Um, so, on to spinning. All of the spinning that happened this week happened yesterday. So, <laughs> yesterday I finished the first half of this fiber. I'm sorry for the crinkling. So this is the fiber that I'm working on. It's from Into the World. It's 64's Merino, so it's extra fine Merino. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the color, but I'll show you the label. The label. The label. Label. Um, it's probably not a current. Since it was a club one, I'm guessing it's not a current color, but anyway. So here's the first half. Um, I'm a little surprised. Do you see how little is left on the bobbin space-wise? 
that was just two ounces. Yeah, because this is supposed to be four, 4.3 ounces. Um, that took up a lot of room on my bobbin. Usually I can fit more on these. I don't know. Um, but I do like how it's knitting up. I'm going to I'll show you a single. Um, I'm going to two play this is the plan. So I need to get the other half spun and and then two play that and hopefully you'll be seeing a finished skein of yarn there soon. However, I broke a rule. One of my rules is that I only spin on one project at a time. I'm very, I'm usually a very, very monogamous spinner. But do you remember last week when I showed you the Falkland fiber oops, that I got from Once Upon a Corgi in the Hedwig colorway? I just couldn't wait. I needed to spin it. I needed to see what it was going to do. Um, here's half of the braid. So you can kind of see. Um, it's a nice white fiber and then it just has these little um, spots of, like there's a spot of green, brownish green, and then these spots of gray. Um, there's kind of a bigger spot of the green brown. So it's based off of Hedwig from Harry Potter, you know, a, a snow owl. So just little kind of speckles of gray and she has those like kind of brownish green eyes. How nice is that spinning up? Oh my goodness. There we go. So you can see the white bits and you can kind of see like here's one of the greener bits and some of the more gray. It is spinning up very, very nicely. Um, there's, I'm kind of in the middle of a spot where there's a lot of color, but underneath there's quite a bit of white. Um, and I keep going back and forth. You can kind of see um, the single. I'll show you on that. So there's the single. It's spinning up to be a little thicker than I anticipated the single to be. Um, however, I can't decide if I want to two-ply this. I split the braid in half with the intention of doing a two-ply. But it's, it's spinning up so nice. <laughs> Um, and there's going to be no way to color match at all. So I'm either going to have to, it'll either be like barber pulled, which could be nice. It could kind of marl the, the yarn a little bit and knit up in a very interesting way. Or I could just leave it as a single ply, have a lot of yardage. I don't know. I can't decide. I just can't decide. The single is really, really nice. I really like how the single's knitting up or spinning. So I don't know. I don't know. I can't decide what I want to do. It's really, really hard. Um, so, but yeah, I just, I absolutely love, sorry for the green ball. I just love how it's spinning. I'm glad, I'm glad I'm working on them both concurrently. Um, to be honest, that extra fine merino, it spins. There's so much of it there that you're like, I'm, I'm nearly done. And then it's, you're not. And it was taking forever just to do that two ounces. So, oh, I was getting a little bored of it. And um, 
yeah, working on the headwig kind of helps break up the monotony and get my spinning mojo back. And anyway, so that's what I've been spinning on and knitting on. What else has been happening? I told you about how I learned a new skill, the Norwegian pearl. That was exciting. <laughs> Probably not nearly as exciting for you as it was for me, but um, it was one of those moments where I went back and I conquered something that I had kind of failed at the first time around. So people, and people always suggest that purling method to me because I'm left-handed. They're like, oh, well then you need to know how to like Norwegian pearl. I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> um I, don't, I guess they just assume that it would be easier for me as a left-handed knitter. I don't know why. Um, but it it gets suggested to me a lot. Um, and so I had tried it and it didn't work. And then, I don't know, it was just kind of nice to kind of go back and conquer a skill that had given me trouble in the past, even though I... I ended up not using it for the project that I practiced it on. Um, the weather had been nice last week, and so we were doing a lot of bike riding. Um, we're trying to get the kids used to longer distances on their bikes because we want to do some bike riding um, along the Katy Trail. We live in Missouri, and um, the Katy Trail is an old railroad line that goes across the state. Um, kind of like the middle of Missouri from St. Louis to Kansas City, kind of. Um, and it's a really nice, it's it's an old railroad grade is what it is, like where the old railroad used to run. They had picked up all the tracks and now it's like a nice gravel kind of dirt lane and you can go hiking on it, but because it was for the railroad. It's even though there's slight hills, it's on a grade, <laughs> like a really um, shallow grade. So it feels like it's just all flat for the most part because trains don't go boom, up steep hills. They need gradual hills. So it makes for really good bike riding and the kids, um, Brooklyn could handle it no problem. Emerson was still kind of little enough that we're like, well, we don't know. And I didn't want to have to haul him in my bike trailer because <laughs> he's a little too big for the bike trailer, but pardon my hiccups. He was just a little too small to, you know, be able to ride it all on his own. Um, but this year he's gotten quite a bit better. He's on a bigger bike, so he's able to keep up better. We don't have to ride quite so slow. Um, so yeah, I think we're gonna do some some biking along the Katy Trail this year. And I even got a new bike. Woohoo! Nothing really was wrong with my old bike, other than it was bought when I was much younger and much more in shape. <laughs> and as I've gotten older, um, the only problem I had with it was like I was having to lean over the handles you know, like lean quite a bit forward and like it, all my upper weight was on my wrists and on my hands, um, with the way that the bike was set up. So we ended up getting a bike that has much higher handlebars, um, so that I can sit up while I ride and, you know, like all of my weight is now centered instead of leaning forward. All the time so that has helped tremendously with my being able to ride farther distances as well so we've been doing a lot of bike riding around town because we have lots of hills so it's kind of like endurance training <laughs> for when we do this longer bike ride on a very flat surface it won't we won't notice any it'll be a breeze to do that um, Memorial Day weekend is coming up here in the U.S. and I've got some texts from Ben that he wants to go do something. We don't know what. He probably won't know what until the day, but doing some little kind of adventures around some of our local state parks and things. So that's coming up this week. Um, 
yeah, knitting wise, it's just going to be the mystery shawl and the Tree of Life Afghan that did not get, it has sat over here since the day I showed you on Tuesday what progress I made. It's still right here and no progress was done on it at all. Yep. It's still just a big ball right there. Nothing's nothing's happened on it, but I do need to work on this. So that's going to be my poetry this week. Um, this is also the last week of summer school for the kids. So fair warning <laughs> next week. Um, I don't know when I'll get to record next week. It will be on Tuesday. I just don't know. Usually I record in the morning and then I do all my editing and I get uploaded by like the same day. Um, I just, with the kids home, I don't know when they're going to give me a chance to sit down and record. Um, which means I don't know if it will go up on Tuesday or if it might be Wednesday by the time it gets uploaded. So... Please be patient over the next couple of weeks while the kids are home for summer. <laughs> um, we, I just, I really hope that um, I won't have to adjust the schedule too, too much, but we'll just have to kind of wait and see, play that by ear. They're normally pretty good about letting me record things. Um, they're used to me saying like, hey, I'm recording, go be quiet, you know, play in your room or something. But they also like to be on camera. So, uh, we might have a couple of little co-hosts starting next week. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, I rambled way too much and I just don't have anything else interesting to tell you. So, uh, thank you again for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. Uh, you can find show notes for everything I talk about, pattern links and that kind of thing over on the Ravelry group and on Facebook and you can find links to all of those down below. If you enjoyed the episode, give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, let them know about uh, knitting podcasts and the joy they're in. There are a lot of them out there to check out. So anyway, I'm going to let you go. <laughs> I'm going to get stuff done and uh, we'll talk to you next week.